Alright, what's going on guys? Stock Scrub Bay here, back again with another video. Things went up, things went down, we're gonna talk about it, but keep in mind it's not financial advice, it's entertainment. Let's talk about today's news. Alright, so first things first, we've gotta talk about Peloton, the workout bike company that uh, is having a very horrible year. Their shares haven't done too hot, and apparently they sent out a uh, confidential, I'm using air quotes because everyone's talking about it, memo talking about how they're gonna stop manufacturing their bikes. Peloton to halt production of its bike's treadmills as demand wanes. Yeah, anytime a company halts production of their products because there's such a lack of demand, it typically doesn't mean that the company's doing incredibly well. And listen, Peloton was on an absolute tear last year, you know? I just think the reality is every be everyone being locked inside meant everybody needed workout equipment at home, and I don't know how in a regular economy that demand is ever going to match what it was in 20. 20. I think the CEO's done the best job he can, but yeah, I just think Peloton was one of those things that flew a little too close to the sun for a bit, you know? There was just no way that I think 2020 numbers were sustainable. That being said, pausing production, definitely not a good thing. Peloton is temporarily halting production of its connected fitness products as consumer demand wanes and the company looks to control losses, according to internal documents obtained by CNBC. The company said in a confidential presentation dated January 10th that demand for its connected fitness equipment has faced a significant reduction around the world due to shoppers' price sensitivity and amplified competitor, competitor activity. Peloton plans to report the fiscal second quarter results on February 8th after the market closes. Yeah, so overall, you know, uh, definitely not a good sign. You do have to wonder how mad the CEO is right now. He's like, damn it, that was a confidential document. Who gave it to CNBC, you know? It's also not usually a good sign when internal documents uh, start to get leaked, especially when it's the bad news, you know? That sounds like something you probably would have wanted to let investors know on an earnings call, not something you want leaked in a way that's not in your control. Because that information in the hands of, you know, anybody else isn't going to get a spin that you would have put on it. Obviously, as a company, you're going to be like, you know, okay, well, we're going to sell off current inventory and then reapproach how we're going to go about this. But nah, when internal documents start to get leaked, they just kind of phrase it in the most clickbait way possible. It is what it is. Overall, though, I would definitely say uh, not very good news coming out of Peloton today. So uh, if you're into the fitness bike world, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I don't really know too much about workout bikes. But uh, it's insane to see a company that so many people were like so hyped about last year in this situation. I can't lie. Next up, I wanted to talk about 5G networks and airplanes because there seems to be a lot of craziness going on about, you know, whether or not the 5G network being activated is going to ground flight or not and the FAA is now saying that weather combined with this is going to cause some problems. The FAA warns 5G related landing restrictions could divert flights as snow hits airports. I'm going to be honest, airlines and flying in general has had a very, very horrible start to 2020. You know, there was all those worker shortages at the start of the year and the Seattle airport thing that left a bunch of people stranded. And now on top of it, they're having to like, you know, 55% of their planes might not be able to function to full capacity with 5G networks online. And the weather on top of it, it's like, dude, this year is really just the year of dumping on airlines, man. And what's really insane is it's not like they've had a great couple years before this. 2020 definitely was a damper on things when the entire world was closed for a while. And it's not like airfares come back to where it was before. Overall, man, it's just like a wham after wham after wham on this entire industry. They really can't catch a break. Whether it's COVID or, you know, worker shortages now, their planes aren't going to work. And what I don't understand and, you know, what, what I just really don't get is how nobody had communicated up until this point. You would think if a product was really going to make half the planes not able to function that somebody would have come along to these, you know, wireless companies and said, hey guys, we got to figure out something to make this work or the airlines and made them talk to each other. Why are we only talking about this like three days before everything is supposed to go online and all these shortages start taking effect? I, I don't understand why we're waiting this long to talk about this stuff. 
All right, moving on though, something that I feel like has been coming for a while. Uh, this is the first real article I've seen about it though. Law enforcement is getting smarter on how to investigate crypto crime, says blockchain data firm. I'll be honest, uh, I think anyone who understands blockchain technology in like the most basic form has been able to see this coming. I'm not a blockchain expert, but if I understand this correctly, it's a ledger where every transaction is permanently recorded. So if you really wanted to, even if you're tumbling it or whatever, like people who have a bunch of time on their hands, you know, the government investigating stuff, could theoretically track transaction after transaction and find out exactly what money went everywhere. So I'm not surprised that they're starting to use data firms to analyze that. Obviously, feel however you want about them analyzing that data, but I'm not surprised it's starting to happen. You know, if it's an irreversible ledger where you can't cover up transactions, you know, chances are at some point they were going to start using that data to start tracking stuff down. It just makes sense. I mean, even even the cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, you know, they could probably track down exactly what dollar went where. I know there's some cryptos that specialize in privacy. I'm not really sure how those are affected. But yeah, it makes sense to me that, you know, most of these would be able at some level to be tracked by the government. It would probably be hard for the average person to track down exactly what went where, but, you know, the FBI tends to have a lot of time on their hands to sit around and figure this stuff out because that's literally what they're supposed to do. So if you're out there using Bitcoin to fund your criminal empire, uh, they're on to you, you know, be careful. All right, moving on over to Walmart, ladies and gentlemen. They're starting to keep their eyes on Amazon, focus a bit more on e-commerce. Walmart taps Tom Ward to head U.S. e-commerce division as Casey Carl departs. Honestly, I feel like Walmart really needs to focus on their e-commerce game. You know, they do a really good job of being the main supplier of a lot of in-person shopping. You know, I think most cities in America have a Walmart. Everyone's probably been to a Walmart if you live here. That being said, for how much presence they have in retail and like how many stores they have, their online presence is surprisingly small. You know, call me crazy but like I feel like most people haven't ordered anything substantial from walmart.com I feel like Amazon's kind of got that whole industry cornered but if anyone is going to be able to compete with Amazon it's going to be Walmart who else has all that warehouse space who else has the infrastructure to move products that quickly not very many companies you know so uh, I'm not surprised considering that Walmart Plus or Walmart Prime, whatever they called it, was a little bit of a flop. That they're trying to switch things up over in the e-commerce department. But uh, yeah, I think overall for the trajectory of Walmart's future, e-commerce is something that they're going to have to focus on. Because I mean, if we're honest here, retail they kind of are, are great at. But I think a lot of future economic growth is going to be online. And even if you can take 10% of Amazon's business, that's quite a hefty chunk of money considering how dominant they are right now. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how this shakes out. Just felt like sharing it with y'all. And the last major story that I wanted to talk about today comes from Procter & Gamble, and it's a sign that inflation is probably here to stay. Higher prices ahead for Tide detergent and other Procter & Gamble products as costs climb higher. This is how inflation, I think, really starts to affect the everyday person. You know, if the cost of laundry soap, hypothetically, in like, you know, this this world I'm topping, talking about here that's made up, if the price of laundry soap doubles, that's going to really starting to cut into the budget of every American. And when you think about how many products Procter & Gamble owns overall, if most of their products start to have a price increase because of inflation, that's going to be massively eating into families' budgets. It just is what it is. Inflation being this high, you know, definitely not a good thing. Hopefully the Federal Reserve raising rates and just starting to make it a little bit harder to borrow money as easy as it is right now will calm things down. That being said, you know, I'm not an economic expert by any means, but from what I've uh, seen and, and read, it tends to be if you have a giant price increase on something that the price doesn't really tend to want to come down, especially on something like laundry soap. If they find out that people will still buy a lot of it at, you know, whatever, $30, there's not really a reason to go back down to 15 let's just be honest here or if they do go down 25 is still more than it ever was in the first place so uh, I think as more and more daily like just normal use products that everybody has to use go up in uh, uh, price you're gonna see it start to really start to squeeze the average American which does suck because that's really the backbone of the economy but uh you know it is what it is I, I don't know I, I can't do anything about it what am I gonna do dude I'm just a youtuber
Anyways, guys, that's all the major stories I wanted to talk about today. Not a very good day for the market overall. Dow Jones down about a percent. S&P 500 down about a percent. NASDAQ down 1.3 percent. Russell 2K approaching 2 percent down. Yeah, definitely not too green of a day. But overall, that'll do it for the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, I'd appreciate you pressing the like button. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought. And of course, subscribe if you're new and turn on notifications. If you really really want to be awesome i'll put a link to the intro song down below along with the link to my podcast the scuffed cast or of course you could use code scrubby at the g fuel checkout great way to get a discount on the best energy drink for gamers and help me out other than that last link in the description is going to be a link to the merch store go pick yourself up a t-shirt i would really appreciate it and uh yeah on that note guys that'll do it don't get anyone pregnant if you do make sure they're hot and i'll see you guys next time i'm out peace